Hi and welcome back to my channel. In this video you have the next reading vlog of the Goodreads Choice Awards season as I'll call it. I'm I probably should have started this vlog yesterday. It is Monday. Few things to clear up. I'm wearing the sweatshirt trying to manifest chilly weather. We got it over the weekend but the weather is predicted to get to a high of 80 on Wednesday. No. No. It's November. Anyway, the other thing is, yes, it's November. I've put up my tree. In the viewfinder, it looks crooked, but I don't think it actually is crooked. I don't know. It did fall over yesterday, so who knows? I have put out Christmas decorations. I just, just in the mood. I decided to go ahead and do it and enjoy the season because it is my favorite season. It's not fully decorated. I have tons of ornaments and stuff that are in the boxes that are down here. But I keep the boxes around the base so it's like there's lots of presents there. Anyway, that aside, I actually finished two books yesterday prior to starting the vlog but after I ended the last vlog. One I talked about briefly because I had started it and was about a hundred or so pages in. The other one I read completely yesterday. So I'm going to start with the one that I finished yesterday and that is While You Were Out. Wow. I actually, at the end of this book, teared up a few times with the few different things that she talked about. Meg Kissinger lays bare a lot of the traumatic things that happened in her family and how several of her family members including herself, have dealt with mental illness, have dealt with depression and mania and various forms and how it's affected their lives. And she also, because she's an investigative journalist, she began this campaign of wanting to talk about all of the frankly terrible ways that our society has dealt with this, with the mentally ill and how we've treated them. And I, I happen to see, so I get notifications from the Nextdoor app and wow, some of those people on there. There happened to be one yesterday or the day before. The initial post was not a problem. They had a legitimate question. They were asking about something, but there was a comment on there. So the, and the, the problem was there was someone who was staying near a creek, which is sort of in between two properties in a tent. And she was saying, my kids are coming back crying because this person yelled at them saying that he owns the property and like, who should I contact about this? Regardless of whether that's true or not, there was a comment on there that made my blood boil. It's basically, they were basically making it this massive conspiracy. Like these people are trying to take advantage of us. Like who in their right mind would live in a tent and do this sort of thing if not to take advantage of people? What? That doesn't make any sense. Do you have a smidgen, a fingernail clipping of compassion for anyone? I so wanted to bang out a response, but I realized I can't be rational about this and you're not gonna hear it either. And so many people were saying, yeah, yeah, right on. I'm like, what? What is wrong with people? Anyway, so uh, obviously several things talked about in here got my blood boiling. And there was also a situation with her father, her mother, like they had their eight kids in the family and her, her, her mother died in her sixties, I think from cancer. And a couple decades later, the father remarries and the things that, that woman did. Oh, I was so angry at her. I called her a certain name, like an actual name because of a certain situation in my family. Oh, the things that she did and how she treated these kids. Like, I mean, they weren't kids by that point. They were fully grown adults. I hate this. I have to go change the battery and I'm not finished talking about this book. One of the best nonfiction books I've read all year. I'm thinking about doing a separate top 10 nonfiction. And if I do, this is definitely going on it. Then I picked up yet another hard hitting memoir with Beautiful Country by Chen Julie Wong. And this was really fascinating, the, the take that she took 
on her life. So Kissinger talks in broad overview of her family, tells different, like f her focus is the mental illness and the struggles with that. Chin's, I can't remember if that's how it's pronounced. Anyway, her approach is to talk about the years, the very foundational years when she, she and her parents lived as undocumented immigrants in New York and the utter abject poverty that they lived in and how that affected how she perceived the world, the actions that her father took, the actions that her mother took, both of them were highly, highly educated. And yet, like in the example of her mother, she worked at a sweatshop, she worked at a some sort of fishery, she worked at a hair and nail salon, all these sorts of things that were so below her when she was a qualified, educated professor, but she couldn't do any of that. Most of the book is spent when she is very, very young, second, third grade, I think, because they end up for quite a while that she doesn't talk about in here in Canada, because Canada actually provided a way for them to become documented and to you make use of their degrees and actually build a life. And then um, Julie ended up coming back to the United States and, as a student and working for years to actually get her citizenship in the United States. And this, it just, it, it shines a light on an experience that not a lot of people talk about. And she took such a unique take on it. And I really appreciated that as well. So I'll go into the book that I'm reading physically. After reading two very hard hitting memoirs right in a row, I decided I'm not going to read my other memoir that nonfiction that I have specified because that's my body by Emily Rodjanowski. I don't actually off the top of my mem memory, remember how to pronounce that. Anyway, that's also a hard hitting one. So I picked up her majesty's Royal Coven and I was doing it because it's a 14 day loan. But then I got this automatic email that my books had been renewed. I think when the library upgraded their system, they automatically renew things, which, Hey, that's super nice. Thanks. Because I frequently forget. Anyway, I'm not very far into this. I think I haven't quite sunk into the narrative itself. I am gradually warming up to the scenario, the situation. I really love Neve, um, who is one of the primary point of view characters. So far we've had three. If I remember correctly, we've had Neve, we've had Helena, and we've had Elle. And this book, Her Majesty's Royal Coven, and then moving on to The Shadow Cabinet, it's based on the idea of HMRC, which is like the tax organization, the IRS of the UK, is actually just a front for a royal coven that was started by Anne Boleyn. And there are, there's official positions and they do certain things. And there was a war. I'm sorry, I had my TV on and I looked over and it was completely black. I have no idea what just happened. It just stopped playing. Okay. So at the start of this, oh, there's also Leonie. Sorry, I almost forgot about her. She hasn't had as many point of view chapters, but there was a war that was solved uh, that they won, but there was a splintering of the coven and there's still people who work for the coven that, but there's people that don't. There's Leonie who started her own coven. And then there is this prophecy that comes about, about the Sully child who basically is going to bring about the end of days, who could bring about the end of days. And that's the start of this book. Basically, that's all I know. I'm really enjoying the witchy vibes combined with 90s pop culture references. Yes, I grew up in the 90s, but in a shel very sheltered way. So I don't necessarily know a lot of those 90s references. Anyway, <laughs> I'm enjoying this. I'm going to read a little bit more tonight, but this is the book that I am reading physically this week. I'll probably go straight on to the shadow cabinet after that, or I may change my mind. Who knows? Then it comes to the next audiobook that I'm reading because I did listen to this one as audiobook. I read this one physically and that is Malice by John Gwynn. My bookmark is still in my original location. I am over halfway now. 
At first, I wondered if I was just going to DNF it because I just was not getting into it. I was not connecting with the characters. My brain was not making sense of the plot. I was so bummed about that. I'm like, okay, I'm going to set it aside. I'm going to wait for the audiobook. Then the audiobook is not the greatest. I should say the audiobook narrator. I've had to slow down the speed significantly because there's something about the cadence of his speech that doesn't lend itself really well to the speed that I listen to audiobooks at. And there's also th this thing that he does with certain accents where it's, they are speaking a language that's not their native language. And he has the words sounding like this on the audiobook. I'm like, you don't, you don't need to do that. So the audiobook is not necessarily my favorite version, but I am finally connecting with it more. It took a little bit getting started, getting over the humps of the quirks of the audiobook. There are, there's like one point of view that I'm still not connecting as much. And the one thing that's a little bit of a detract, detractor from this is the chapters well, telling you in the book who it starts off with and in the audiobook it says that but if you happen to miss it i'm like oh wait who are we with again are we with corbin are we with nathair are we with validus who are we with uh, but i'm really getting into the plot i prefer corbin's point of view i really like his i'm gra i'm i have been won over to veritas or validus i forget see i'm really doing well with that but anyway i'm being won over to that side I'm really intrigued about it there. The person set up sort of to be the villain has had a few chapters. I'm not necessarily connecting those. The, the whole politics and things are not necessarily clicking with me. And I think it's because there's so many levels of kingships. There's a high king and then there's so many kings under him and princes and lords. And I do not have that straight in my head yet, but I have definitely, thankfully, gotten hooked into the story much more than I was at the beginning of today. As far as what I'm going to tackle for the rest of the week, I have to decide whether or not I'm going to tackle my other big book, which is not a Goodreads book. And that is the finale of the Course of Dragon series. I'm nervous. I'm nervous because I don't want that to end. Every book so far has been five stars. I'm nervous about that. I don't know if I'm going to do that or another audiobook, potentially Hellbent or one of the others. I picked up five more books from the library that are potentially books on the list. I got Huge on the World, The Stolen Heir, one of the Inheritance Trilogy books because I think the fourth book came out this year and I've only read the, I've read only the first one and I forget what the other two were. I'm going to pick off that TBR cart with that in mind as I go forward. But here there's my very exceptionally long opening clip for this vlog. Okay, it is time for another update. I really didn't feel like updating yesterday, Tuesday, it's Wednesday. I just did a brief unboxing. I have not finished any books since then, although I'm very close with one. Yesterday, I didn't read any more of Her Majesty's Royal Coven, or did I yesterday? Oh, yesterday I did, but Monday I didn't. So I only got about 30 more pages in on this book. I don't really have any different thoughts than I did before because I didn't read that much more of it, but I hope to read a little bit more tonight and start get, making my way through this. The book that I have the most thoughts about is Malice. I am about a little less than half an hour away from finishing this book and I don't know how to think about this book. I have wanted to like this so much. This book has everything that I think I would enjoy that I know I've enjoyed about all kinds of other fantasy books, but I'm not connecting with this book in the way that I thought I did. But then there are times in the audiobook when I do connect with it and certain stories, especially Corbin, I love Corbin, and the last update, I was also saying that I love Nathair. His storyline and character has gotten quite interesting. The things that have happened and then how that affects Veritas. I'm really intrigued by this. There's so much about this that I am intrigued by. 
And I don't know whether it's the rocky start that it got off to, then combined with the rocky nature of the audiobook. It's not a smooth audiobook listening. I wonder if that's what's keeping me from connecting and being able to understand how all of these different points of view connect because I thought, okay, maybe it's just too confusing. But then I thought about the book that I'm going to pick up next, uh, Discord of Gods, the last book in the Course of Dragon series by Jen Lyons. Talk about a confusing book. Those books are confusing. The entire thing is utterly mind boggling. But I love them. So it's like, okay, so it's not the confusion aspect. I mean, maybe I expect it in that series. And this one seems like it should be more straightforward. I think one of the things is that the alliances and where the alliances should go does not make sense to me yet. So most of the things in Corbin's point of view fully understand. I know Corbin, I know his sister, his woven, the uh, stable master. I know who's his king because I know it's this whole group because Mithair is, I think, the high king and there's a bunch of kings underneath. But then there's this thing that has just happened where there's now a siege of the area where Corbin is by this other group. But I don't remember who they are or how they're connected. But then you switch points of view and there's battles with giants. I'm like, where did the giants come from? I don't understand this. And I just wonder if part of this is I didn't get a good hook into it, firm foundation of understanding in the beginning portion that I read physically because I was reading it at a point where it was right before I was going to bed, which is probably not the best for brain power for this. And then the, the audiobook where the pace varies and it, it can be really choppy on certain points, long pauses at other points, but then get really, really, really fast so that I won't be able to understand what's said. So I don't know what I'm going to rate this book. I've gone back and forth at points. I'm like, oh, I really like this. I think I will continue on in the series. At other points, I'm like, oh, this is fine. I don't know if I'll continue on in the series. So I have really mixed feelings about this, and that is not what I expected. I don't know if anything's going to change with the ending. If it's a cliffhanger ending, maybe I'll be more interested and I'll be more hooked in. I think I am going to continue with the series, but when I do, I'm going to read the other parts of the series at times where I'm not working, like on vacation days off, so that I can read it earlier in the day and not as my going to sleep and so that I can read it physically because the audiobook for this series is not it. Okay, another day, another unboxing, another update in this setup. So I'm first going to talk briefly about Her Majesty's Royal Coven. I am chipping my way through this book and I'm really enjoying it. Things have taken a turn with the silly child and the identity of the silly child and something that happened at a certain conversation. And I'm like, oh, you didn't. And the way that the interactions between these former members of Her Majesty's Royal Coven, I'm really enjoying this. I think I'm pretty sure that I would engage even more with this book if I were reading it more as a cohesive whole and not say 50 to 70 pages a day, because I'm really enjoying this. It's not going deep in, but it's getting enough of a connection that I'm hooked for the next parts. And I really want more with some of these characters I don't mind the size of the cast, but part of me wishes that it was just a little bit smaller so that we could go even more depth in more depth with some of these characters. So I didn't bring, so that's the physical book that I'm reading. I didn't bring back uh, Malice to this spot because I did finish it yesterday. My thoughts really haven't changed on that. Like I said, I had only a half hour to finish. I think I will continue with the series, but I'm going to wait for a much later date and I'm going to read a recap before I get into the second book. And just like I thought, I picked up Discord of Gods and whew, I'm immediately back in. Now there's no what's happening here that like there was at the beginning of the fourth book, but I read the fourth and the fifth in much closer succession than book three and book four. In this one, it's not really obvious, I don't think, because I'm about 40% of the way through now. Yes, I've been listening to a lot of this because I love this book. Um, but I don't think 
Jen Lyon th is doing a similar thing that she has in all of the other books with the not linear telling of the story where there's an action, uh, a thread of the story that is at X point in time and most of it is in the past and leading up to that timelines join and then moves forward. I don't think she's doing that in here and I'm still really enjoying it. I love all of these characters. I love all of the complexity and how Jen Lyons is balancing all of it. The way that she is weaving together this tale and now she's even bringing in other characters that we saw in previous books but really didn't have a place in book four. I feel like this is all a gush fest because I don't have specific things to say. I'm thinking about one thing. So in this, well in this whole series, and one of the reason, the main reason that I've read it as an audiobook is because there are footnotes throughout the entire thing. And some of the footnotes have been Dervishar and some have been Senere, two very different characters. In this one, we have footnotes from both. Like they'll have a conversation in the footnotes. I love that so much. There's also, and that's what's making me laugh, what I'm thinking of. There's also a point where there's a young child. I think it's the child of a couple of the characters and he's really, he's fussing. He won't be calmed. And Kalindra, his mom, like looks at Dervishar and wants help. And he get like gives that look, does something magic and the child calms down. And she says something about thinking that maybe she would ask him to babysit or, but he wouldn't be the kind of person that would do that. And then in the footnote, we get a no. <laughs> I started with laughter when I heard that. It was so good. I love that so much. Okay. So I love the wit. I love the banter. I love the way that Senere and Dervishar are playing off of each other in the footnotes. I love how Kieran's character has grown so much since the first book. It's just phenomenal to see what Jen Lyons has done with his character. I cannot wait to pick this back up and read more. Obviously not pick this back up, but listen to the audiobook and read more. But I'm so sad because when I finish this, I'll be done with the series. <laughs> I love this series. Okay, I'm here to make the last update of this vlog. I'm not the best at vlogs. I, I always have this idea that I will update every day and then I don't update every day. So I had that massive clip at the beginning and now I'm gonna have another massive clip at the end because I have three books to talk about. Two of which I've talked about a little bit before, one of which I haven't talked about at all because I read it all yesterday. That is, setting that aside, I think of the books that I have read this week and I don't even think I have, no, I do have all of them here. Okay, of the books that I've read this week, only one of them I think will directly be on the Goodreads Choice Awards, even though I am calling this a Goodreads Choice Award vlog. One of them is a prequel to one that I think is going to be on the list, which will obviously help me out because I won't have to read it. Not a prequel, the first book in the series. Anyway, so not as many. It's This vlog is not as directly Goodreads Choice Awards related, but I am getting through my to-do list, working on getting to that point. Now, that aside, let's talk about the books that I read the books that I finished since the last time that I updated. I don't even remember what day that was. The first of those is Her Majesty's Royal Coven. This is the one that is tangentially related to Goodreads Choice Awards because the Shadow Cabinet probably will be on the list. And I enjoyed this a lot more than I thought I would. Now there are definitely parts of this that are not really necessarily my style, not something I am necessarily drawn to. And that's okay, not every book is going to be 100% for me. This, though, is not a book that I would have picked up otherwise, and now I have two of those that I've read in the past two weeks to prepare for the Goodreads Choice Awards. First one was Ninth House, and now this one that I knew about, but I'm like, yeah, okay, uh, fine. I don't know that I'll ever read that. But now that they're on this project, I picked it up, I read it, and I thought, oh, I actually kind of enjoyed that. I'm expanding my horizons a little bit. There were parts of this that are not necessarily to my taste, a little bit of the um, romance aspect, sexual tension, etc. A couple of those scenes were in there. That's just not my personal taste. It's fine. I know I'm not the only one. I also know that there are a lot of people who love that. 
that wasn't overwhelming. There's like one or two of them. I would have loved to have seen more depth from some of these characters. Even though we didn't get it, I still, huh, I knew that there was a twist at the end. I'd heard, not a twist, a cliffhanger, because people had mentioned that. And I thought that I saw the cliffhanger and noticed it. And then the last page came. I'm like, oh, this is the ultimate of cliffhangers. It's on the last page. And when that happened, I went, wait, what? I literally gasped out loud when this happened. And when you can be so engaged in a book, I'm so excited I don't have to wait for the sequel, but I've heard that there's another cliffhanger at the end of the sequel, which if I enjoy the shadow cabinet as well, I will not have to wait for the third book in the series. I haven't run any of these through cop pile. I need to get better at updating that more routinely, but I think this is going to be a high four stars, not quite a four and a half, but definitely higher than some of the other four stars that I've had. Now I'll talk about the other book that I have mentioned briefly, not briefly. I've talked about this a lot. The Discord of Gods. I finished this yesterday and I can safely say the Course of Dragons series is hands down my favorite series. I don't know that a series is ever going to top this. And I don't know that it would be my favorite series if I'd read it physically. I, I think I still would have enjoyed it, but there's just some aspects to the impeccable audiobook production of this series that's just added so much to it. I loved the quirky nature of all of these characters. I loved all of the banter included in the footnotes. I loved the non-traditional, non-linear nature of the storytelling, which for someone like me is remarkable. Out of all five of these books, this one is the most linear, the most straightforward time-wise. There's all sorts of other things that happen that may get equally as confusing as the rest of the books in the series. More and more stuff got in, it was introduced, but it also explained things from before. The way that it was introduced. See, I'm trying not to tell details because this is the fifth book in a series, but there's so much of a cyclical nature to a lot of the things that happen in here with the soul swapping and etc. And there's another cycle that's added in. And when you realize that, not only does it ramp up the stakes, but it also makes so much sense. And I loved the resolution. It was almost everybody gets a happy-ish ending, but not quite. And I think that was what made it so good. And the epilogue, oh, I loved the epilogue. It was so sweet. And I just, I have nothing but praise for this series. This is just incredible. So before I come to the book that I read last or entirely on Saturday, I am going to mention that I am currently reading, I'm about a quarter of the way through Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. I probably will not talk about that specifically in any of my vlogs or put up a review until a while passes because there are some issues with, and I forget the overall imprint. It's a smaller imprint of one of the big fives, but it has imprints under it. And one of those imprints publishes, is Wednesday Books, and it publishes Rebecca Ross's books there was an employee of this company who has said some absolutely terrible things online regarding the Palestinians and the conflict. If it were just that, would I boycott? Would I support this? No, not necessarily, but this person is like their role is in just is in marketing and distribution of arcs and things like that. And there are allegations, don't know 100% about them, um, but there are allegations that they have sent or not sent arcs based on these views that they have espoused online. And in that case, yes, the company should do something about this employee and they're not really saying anything. So I'm not going to promote that on my channel, even though I'm a very small channel. So that is all that I'm going to say about that book. Even though this author is one of my favorites. I love her earlier 
her adult duology, which is the first that I read from her. And I'm really excited to read this book, which is probably going to get a lot of hype on the Goodreads Choice Awards. So it's really sad that I'm not going to talk about it in my blog vlogs or it's just really sad what's going on at the publisher and the fact that people are continuing to support with their silence. I'm not going to get into that because there's been other things that have happened today that have really weighed me down. Let's transition to talking about the book. The last book that I read completely this week and that is Atalanta by Jennifer St. Now last month I read Ariadne which was one of my book of the month books by the same author. This is her most recent release. This is likely going to be on the Goodreads Choice Awards list. They usually have at least one Greek myth, tele myth retelling on the list. This I enjoyed. Atalanta is not a figure that I know a lot about. I knew that she is a mythological figure figure and but I didn't know any of the details. I didn't know that she was on the sailing of uh, the journey with Jason and the Argonauts. I didn't know she was on the Argo. Uh, I did, I don't know a lot about Jason and the Argonauts. I know that it existed. What little I know is from Percy Jackson. So that's not the original myth. So this is the part of Greek mythology that I don't necessarily know a lot about. And, and that was a different aspect to the story of Ariadne and the different things included in there because that brought in a lot of Greek mythology that I knew more about. And at the same time, Atalanta is a very interesting character because her character, she was abandoned, left on a mountainside to die because her father wanted sons and she was a girl. She's a Greek princess. She ends up being raised by bears, partially. And then when the bear, the mother bear rejects her and her other cubs, she's taken in by Artemis. And then Artemis is the one that sends her on this journey because the, there's all these handpicked messengers or stand-ins for the gods. There's a word that I want, but it's not coming. But anyway, representatives of the gods. And various things happen throughout this. And it's really interesting the way that it's told because it doesn't span as much time as Ariadne does. The storytelling, I could definitely tell it was Jennifer Saints at the beginning when it's, um, she, when she's telling about the years that she spent in her growing up years before she sailed on the Argo. But most of this book are the different stops along the way of the journey. And it's much more detailed and slowed down pace wise of a story than Ariadne is. Although Theseus makes an appearance in this uh, briefly, and you can already tell that he's a scumbag. Anyway, I say all that to say of the Greek myth retellings that I have read, I really enjoy some Jennifer Saint's takes on them. I just don't think that Atalanta lived quite up to the heights that Ariadne reached. Like Ariadne was tugging on my heartstrings and it got me really invested in the stories chronicled in that. This one, not so much. It was still there. I still really enjoyed the telling of the story and learning more about this Greek myth. It just didn't quite live up to Ariadne. Although out of all the Greek myth retellings that I have read, both Ariadne and Atalanta are way above all the others that I've read. So there you go. I have read six complete books this week. Um, not quite as many as I would have hoped because just during the week, it's so hard to read physically and it takes me three, four days to get through physical books during the week. And then audiobooks, I had some really long audiobooks that I was reading first Malice and then Discord of Gods. So that did slow me down a little bit. It's interesting of this stack, these two, I finished on Sunday a week ago. So I, I started this Saturday a week ago and then finished it on Sunday, read this completely on Sunday. And then this one I've been reading for a while. This one I read completely on Saturday. This one took the second half of the week and this one took basically all week. So that shows you the pace of my reading. Next week marks the release of the Goodreads Choice Awards. So we'll see which ones I get up to reading next week. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one.